Good building design requires many consultants to come together and many of them have to compromise on their design solution. It's a fine line that it needs to walk. Much like nature, needs to have not too much and not too little. Today I'll be going through my holistic approach to engineering and how you can apply it to your designs. And it's not just about you thinking what's best for structures, but what's best for project. So let's get into it. Far too often as engineers, we like to plan our sandbox. We only think about what's best for us, what's best for structures. But a building as a whole, you need many other consultants. So you need your hydraulics, you need your architects, you need your civil engineers, you need your electrical engineers, you need your mechanical engineers. They all need to come together for that effective design. When we're thinking about our design, we're always thinking about where the structure's gotta go, what's gonna be best for us. We're not necessarily thinking about what is the concerns of the architect? What is the concerns of the mechanical engineer? What is the concerns of the electrical engineer? Yes, if the building stands up, it's somewhat functional, but if you can't get electricity to the places that it needs to be, how effective is it really? Far too often as engineers, we approach the design within our own sandbox and not thinking about other consultants. So trying to remove all the transfers wherever possible to try and keep the structure aligned as much as possible. Trying to keep our structure thicker to keep those deflections down. Not really thinking about how our design can affect other people. As we can see, a design of a building requires many consultants to come together. So it's all about collaboration. By approaching it holistically, you will have a better project team. You're not just coming to people with problems, you're actually coming to people with solutions. And this is what everyone wants. They want a solution to their design. As I'm sure when everyone's been talking to other people, they just get sick of those people that are just coming to them with problems. If you can come to people with solutions, that's really where the holy grail is. If you've made their life easier, they're more likely to recommend you to other consultants. And even the client is gonna like you more as you're gonna come up with a better design for their build. So how can you listen and work out the concerns of these other consultants? Well, quite often on big projects, you have group meetings. And it's not just about tuning out and just talking when it's your turn. It's about listening to the other consultants in those meetings and the problems they're having with the design. As you may be to come up with a simple change to solution to your design, it also solves their problems. So when in a meeting, taking notes about what the concerns of the other consultants are, will help you understand their problems and also the problems that are happening on the project as a whole that you may be to solve easier. And if you're taking this holistic approach as well, you see it's all about your communication as you need to break down the ideas in such a way that it's easy for other people to understand. For example, a lot of concerns, especially for a lot of consultants, whether they be hydraulic, electrical or mechanical, is getting penetrations through your structure. So what is a quick and effective way that you can show them where they can put penetrations? So I've come up with this thing that I call the traffic light system, where we have red, orange and green. You may have seen this in an earlier episode, but it's really quite effective. Everyone knows that traffic light system. Red means stop, do not go. Orange means eh, maybe. And green means yes, go ahead. You can put as big a hole penetration as possible. As you can see here, we can mark up simple plans showing them that we do not necessarily want those penetrations around columns. Preferably move them away into the middle, middle strip. So in between columns diagonally. But if we have to, they can be aligned. Yes, we can get away with putting penetrations right next to columns, but it creates the project more costly. So by displaying it in this type of way, it's able to effectively communicate to the other consultants what your concerns are with the structure. And they may be able to go, look, we can have simple changes to move penetrations here, there, and in other locations. Now, these meetings quite often are more effective early on in the project design. When you're starting design, sit around the table with the other consultants and the architect. Listen to the, what their problems are. Get out that paper and sketchboard. What do they need to achieve? They need to have penetrations here, there. They need to service the apartments. And you're quickly drawing up what they need in your design. And quickly you're able to make many changes, especially early on, before too much has been locked down. The best time to apply a holistic approach to design is as early on as possible, as the design changes are minimal to the project. So by having that early on round table where you've just got the sketch pad out, it's really rough, working out where they want to service, where they've got their plant platforms, how we can connect it up the tower, so having those localised penetrations through the height of the building is much easier early on. 
And just having that quick round table, you're able to quickly locate a number of different penetrations through your structure. They may have additional other concerns, such as ramps and transfers. So laying drawings on top of each other to see where we can apply structure right through our hull design and where we may need to have transfers. And is there other ways that we can avoid it? So it's all about what's best for a project. And that's not necessarily what's best for our engineering design. Sometimes a transfer may be the best solution for your project, although it does require more structure in the design and it's not as efficient. So if you're enjoying this content about the holistic design, hit the like button. It gives me great confidence in what I'm doing and helps me work out the type of content to make for you. Now let's keep going with the holistic approach to design. So what concerns do other consultants have? For example, that architect, he wants to make sure the building is effective for use. So it's effective for all the people that are operating inside that building. So you need to have those entry and exit points. You need to make sure it's DDA compliant. He also wants to make sure it's aesthetically pleasing as he wants to sell something that looks beautiful. And that's what the client wants as well. He does not want just that square box. He wants something that's sellable and looks amazing. How about the hydraulic engineer? The hydraulic engineer needs to have certain falls on his pipes, especially when he's looking at drainage. Gravity only flows one way, so he needs to get from where his equipment is, whether that be toilets, sinks, or just drainage, to other downpipes inside the building. So the longer and further away those penetrations are, the lower the ceiling height needs to be as the more that pipe needs to drop. Or mechanical. Mechanical needs to get penetrations through your structure. I know it's the bane of all engineers is putting penetrations. However, they need big ducts as they need to flow a lot of air through their design to effectively cool or heat a building. So they need a heater cool a building so it's comfortable for all the occupants. So as you can see here, it's about listening to other consultants about their concerns and applying it to your design. When we approach a design, what are we concerned about? We want to make sure the structure is strong and effective. It meets certain deflection limits and serviceability requirements. So when we've got columns inside of locations and we have a deflection problem, our first approach is to make the structure deeper. However, this might not be the most effective approach. As a deeper structure means we're lowering those ceilings, you potentially got ducts that are dropping that ceiling even further. So are there different ways that we can approach that design? And just because the design approaches are followed a certain way, does not mean there's a more effective way that we can approach it. Adam. That I can get with you. As you can see, a holistic approach is all about collaboration. And before you make a design change, is asking yourself a series of questions. Who else is this change going to affect? Are there any other knock-on effects to making this change? Are there any other solutions? And is it best for project? As potentially, if it is best for structures, it may work, but if it's not best for project, it's not the right answer. And looking for those other solutions that may solve your problem and the other people's problems as well. As there's many ways to skin a cat and some are better than others. And a holistic approach is throughout the whole life cycle of the design. So not just at the start, but through its whole design changes. As when you're making a design, you may have a series of different changes that lead you in one path. However, when you look at it as a whole for the des final design solution, alternate sol solutions may actually pop up that are actually better for project. And then potentially proposing them as a better solution to the design. Now this is a win-win when it's pulled off, as not only do you achieve a better project, so all the consultants have a much easier time, but also the client gets a better build that's potentially also cheaper. Do so you always thinking to yourself, what is best for project? Far too often the structural engineers, we sit back and just look at our design in isolation. How do we make this building stand up? But with any design solution, there's a number of different options. So if you make one design change and it's not best for project, try and come up with the alternate solutions. And by approaching it this way, you can also potentially have, when you have a serious problem with your design, there is no other solution. Other people are more likely to come to the table. As you have given them a number of different design solutions early on to solve their problems, they can come to the table and solve some of your problems as well. So it makes your life easier. Are there any other approaches to design that you may adopt that help you design your solution? Please comment below. And if you made it to this point, you clearly like the video, so hit that like button. And if you're interested in structural engineering, Hit the subscribe button and to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.